It's not often that a mic comes around that makes you completely reconsider what's possible while recording, but that's exactly what happened with me and the Lauten LS308. A pair of these mics showed up at my door just a couple days before leaving for a two-week remote recording session with TV composer and Grammy-nominated engineer Rich Tizzoli on the island of St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I figured that was as good a time as any to test these things out, so I packed them into my suitcase and off I went. The first thing I recorded with it was some quiet finger taps on a floor tom. And despite recording this in an untreated reverberant room with squeaky ceiling fans running overhead, multiple pairs of open back headphones live in the room, a coffee maker running in the background, and the mic placed about a foot from an open window with the sound of ocean waves crashing against the shore pouring in, when I listened back, I couldn't hear anything except fingers hitting a floor tom. Even after applying heavy compression, there was virtually no sign of background noise. Just to be sure I wasn't crazy or this wasn't a fluke, I tried a more typical condenser in the same position, and it was exactly what you'd expect. Weird room reflections and tons of background noise. The Lauten, by comparison, sounded like it was recorded in the booth of a studio. And that's the magic of this mic. It's got what's called a second order cardioid pickup pattern. I don't really know what that means or how it works, but what it means for you and me is that the mic picks up what it's pointed at and not much else. I'm guessing most of you aren't struggling to keep ocean sounds out of your recordings though. So let's try these in a more typical studio setting. And a quick disclaimer, Lauten did send me these mics to try out, but they have no control over what I say in this video or even whether or not I made this video about them at all. So I promise you, I wouldn't be telling you that these mics are cool if I didn't genuinely believe that these mics are cool. And I do think they're cool. Cool enough that I'm pretty sure I need to buy a third one. But with that out of the way, one of the most popular uses for these mics seems to be on toms, and that makes sense. Excessive cymbal bleed in tom mics is like the bane of my existence. So if these mics can help with that, I will be eternally grateful. Let's see how they compare to my old go-to tom mics, the Shure Beta 98, because it ultimately doesn't matter how much cymbal bleed they reject if they don't sound good. Good news, they sound great. I found the 308 needed a healthy boost of top end EQ, as it's naturally a little bit of a dark sounding mic, especially compared to the Shures, which have a pretty massive bump around six or 7K built in. But after adding in some extra top end, I really preferred the sound of the Lautens. They were really thick and weighty sounding with a great mid range character. The Shures by comparison, kinda sounded wimpy and clicky and just less rock and roll. But now let's compare the bleed between the two mics. This is gonna have the same levels and the same processing as the previous clip, but now we're just gonna to listen to the section where I'm playing the cymbals instead of the toms. I mean, I think that speaks for itself. The bleed on the Shure isn't too, too bad, but especially when drummers come in with really low cymbals or just a ton of cymbals, or if they hit their cymbals way too hard, it becomes pretty annoying to deal with. The light ones on the other hand, no problem. Switching to the 308s on toms has made dealing with cymbal bleed so much easier for me. Even just during tracking, my favorite gate plugin, Oxford Drum Gate, has way too much latency to use live while recording. So I usually have to tuck the toms down quite a bit until we're done tracking and I can gate them. In the couple projects I've done since I've switched to the Lautens, it's been really great just having the toms nice and loud without cymbals ripping my head off. One note here though, because of how tight the pickup pattern is, you do have to be a little bit careful with your mic placement. For toms, I found that I like the 308 a little bit farther back than you'd place most tom mics. And then I angle it down at maybe 30 to 45 degrees or so, pointed right at the center of the tom where the stick hits the head. So all this success on toms got me thinking, where else might this level of isolation come in handy around your drum kit? Let's try kick drum. I don't like to gate my kick out mic because I like to let the low end ring out a little bit, but unless you've got your mic right up practically touching the drum, you usually get a fair bit of cymbals in there. Let's see if the 308 can help with that. Yeah, that right there is why I'm probably gonna buy a third one of these. I just love the way that sounds. It captures a lot of that great mid-range character you look for in a kick out mic, 
Plus, holy crap, that's got some low end. Like it practically sounds like I combined a kick out mic and a sub kick all in one. I might actually try using the 50 Hertz roll off on the mic next time I use it on kick to control that a little bit. Yet then again, depending on the vibe of the track, those subs could really come in handy. I also got really cool results using the 308 as a crotch mic. It was able to isolate the kick and snare really well without too much cymbals. So you can crush it with a compressor, adding all that crunchy character without dealing with the unruly cymbals. I tried it on snare as well, but didn't really love it there. Although to be fair, I don't think I've ever really loved anything but an SM57 on snare. So this is definitely not an all rounder kind of mic, which I actually really appreciate. Like those obviously have their place and I own a bunch of them, but it's also useful to have mics that may only do a couple things, but they absolutely nail those couple things. They solve problems that no other mic can. And that's what the 308 does. I tried it on guitar. It was okay, not my favorite. It was actually pretty cool on bass. I probably wouldn't want to use it on vocals or acoustic guitar, but man, on toms and kick, this thing rules. I've tried probably like 20 different Tom mics, including some that cost three times what the 308 costs. And this one right here, this thing just nails it. If Flatwood ever happens to make a version two of this mic, I do think it would be really cool if they added a switchable top boost. Like I said earlier, it's easy enough to EQ the top end in if you want it, but it'd be nice if you had the option to add some right at the mic itself. I don't know how easy that would be, but it'd be neat. But anyway, if you wanna try one of these out for yourself, there's a link to them in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.